Welcome to the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance's 2020 topic-based video series. In this series, we'll review basic concepts and ideas pertinent not only to engineers new to short span steel bridge design, but those looking for a refresher of fundamental concepts. This is the second of a two-part series in live load distribution. Our first video discussed the general parameters associated with live load distribution, namely the vehicular live loads we need to deal with, as well as the two challenges that engineers face when designing short span steel bridges in relation to uh, live loads, particularly the structural analysis relating to longitudinal loading or longitudinal distribution, as well as the structural analysis relating to transverse distribution. As we discussed in our previous video, longitudinal distribution for typical short span steel girder uh, bridge design projects is namely handled through using influence lines. However, transverse distribution is handled through live load distribution factors. Live load distribution factors are the primary focus of this video. We'll provide an overview of the parameters affecting live load distribution, as well as an overview of relevant specifications. Again, note that this presentation is limited to the current version of AASHTO LRFD specifications. Please refer to all applicable state and local guidelines, as well as current versions of specifications when performing your designs. So as was stated in the previous video, influence lines can be used to longitudinally distribute the live loads presented in AASHTO and moments and shears can be generated for the purpose of design. However, those, uh, those values need to be distributed transversely. In other words, we need to determine how much of those longitudinal moments and shears need to be distributed to each girder. Fortunately, AASHTO specifications provide a tool for engineers to do this. This tool is called live load distribution factors. Employing them is really easy. You take the moments and shears generated from a conventional line girder analysis and then adjust them by the appropriate live load distribution factor to obtain the moments and shears necessary for design. ASCO LRFD specifications contain a large suite of live load distribution factors applicable to short span steel girder bridge design. It can seem daunting at first because when you open the specification, there's a large library of distribution factors applicable for a wide variety of cross sections. Instead of a single live load distribution factor, engineers compute a suite of them and take the controlling values. And so for short span steel bridge design, engineers commonly take the largest moment live load distribution factor and the largest shear live load distribution factor and design based off of those. In the specification, however, they're discretized far more specifically than that. There are live load distribution factors for moment as well as live load distribution factors for shear. There are live load distribution factors for interior girders as well as for exterior girders. And there's also live load distribution factors for single lane loading conditions versus multiple lane loading conditions. So again, it can seem daunting at first, but ultimately it's a routine step-by-step -step process uh, that an engineer needs to follow. And fortunately, the equations are, are very plug and chug, very, uh, very methodical. When beginning the process of computing live load distribution factors, you'll need a series of parameters in order to compute uh, uh, these factors. Uh, and namely, they can be split up into two categories. We need parameters related to the geometry of the cross section, um, such as the girder spacing, the slab thickness, the overhang width, uh, etc. Uh, we also need the stiffness properties of the girder that we're looking at. We need the elastic moduli, we need the cross-sectional area, the moment of inertia, etc. Once you have a preliminary design uh, with today's modern tools, with today's spreadsheets and computer programs and whatnot, these are, are very easily computed. Just be aware that when you begin the process of computing live load distribution factors, you'll need a series of data points, of inputs, about your, uh, about your given project in order to produce the output live load distribution factors. An example of one of these expressions is as follows. So for instance, this is the live load distribution factor that's presented in AASHTO for distributing shears to an interior beam with multiple lanes loaded. Similarly, there would be a distribution factor for shears distributed to an interior beam with a single lane loaded. And then there's another suite for exterior girders uh, and so on and so forth. But just taking one equation at a time, this is the live load distribution factor for shears distributed to an interior beam with multiple lanes loaded. And it is computed by taking 0 0.2 plus S over 12 minus the quantity S over 35 squared, where S is the girder spacing. 
So gi given the girder spacing, the live load distribution factor is easily computed by just plugging the girder spacing into this expression and computing the result. And the remaining equations, while there are, uh, it might seem there are a few of them, are just as easy, just very plug and chug. As you go through the specification, you will find these suite of live load distribution factors organized in this fashion. Shears distributed to interior beams, shears distributed to exterior beams, moments distributed to interior beams, uh, etc. There are two terms that are going to pop up throughout the, uh, your investigation of ASHTO LRFD specifications that do warrant a little bit of explanation. The first is the lever rule. The lever rule is a tool that can be used to compute a live load distribution factor when your bridge falls outside the range of what's presented uh, in the specification. Now, it should be noted that for most short span steel bridge designs, this is highly unlikely to happen, but there are instances where the lever rule is used even when your bridge falls within a given range. For instance, exterior girder distribution in one lane loaded scenarios utilizes the lever rule for short span I girder uh, bridges. The live load distribution factor is computed using the lever rule by just assuming that the slab acts as a beam that is simply supported by the girders. The truck is then placed on the, on the bridge and then the support reactions, if you will, are computed at each girder and those support reactions are taken as the live load distribution factor. There's also a procedure which shows up in the commentary of section four of the ASHTO specifications called special analysis. Uh, this procedure is identical to the conventional approximation approach for pile loads. The loads are placed on the cross section and then the cross section is assumed to undergo rigid body rotation, just like a pile cap on a group of uh, piles. We assume that each beam acts as a pile and we just determine the reaction on each beam and take that reaction to be the live load distribution factor. Fortunately, there's a lot of resources available to walk you through this process. The first I'll point out is the, the National Steel Bridge Alliance's Steel Bridge Design Handbook has a chapter on structural analysis and goes through the various provisions uh, related there too. This was discussed in the previous video. The other resource I definitely want to mention is on the Short Span Steel Bridges website. This is a design evaluation of a typical short span steel bridge that you can find at the link shown on the bottom right. And in this report, a step-by-step -step set of calculations is performed for a typical short span steel bridge so that you as the engineer have a guide to follow when designing your particular project. It's a very valuable resource and I hope that uh, it helps you in your, in your bridge design uh, project. This concludes the second of a two-part series on live load distribution. We hope you found this informative and we thank you for your time and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.